Hey, what's up guys? It's Matt from Cornelius Creations, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to mod your OpenL number eight or any of your OpenL knives. So what is modding? Modding is when you take this OpenL right here and you turn it into something like this. Now you can see right here, I have done a ton of these OpenL mods. And you may be asking yourself, why would I want to do this? Well, the reason why it is so fun to mod these things, you can learn so much by doing these. This is what kind of got me in the start doing the tomahawks and these together. And I just learned woodworking from doing the little knives like this. So in this video guide, I'm gonna take you step by step what you need to do in order to mod your knife and make it look great. Let's get started. To get started, you need a wood burner. Now I have a pretty expensive razor tip, but that's all right if you don't have the money to invest in one of these. I have this because I do it all the time. Now if we move over here, you can see this is a pretty inexpensive Weller wood burner right here. Now I recommend going with a walnut hollow. You can get them at any craft store usually or on Amazon, I think around 25 bucks, but it actually has a temperature dial on it. But like I said, you guys can get away with something cheap. The next thing we will need is some tape. The third thing we need is some sandpaper. Now I, I am specifically using 120 grit and 220 grit to do this. I'm gonna show you a big secret right here when you're modding and this will go for your tomahawks or all your woodworking projects on any of your mods. And here's the secret is that you want to carve them but also wood burn them. So that's one of my secrets I do is wood burning and carving at the same time. It just brings out this great design. So the third thing we need is a flex shaft tool. Now I'm using the Fordham here, and this is a pretty expensive unit. If you've been watching my videos, you've noticed I've been using this, but you can use something very inexpensive. Here's another one right here I got from Sam's Club. It's called Project Partners. Now granted, it's not near as powerful as my Dremel or my Fordham is, but to get started, I think this is around $25 at Sam's. Now in another video, you will see me go over what tools you need to do this. Now we will need to tape the metal around the knife. I am using painter's tape, but you can use masking tape or any kind of tape you have. I'll take that back. I don't recommend scotch tape, but I prefer the painter's tape right here because it goes on easy and comes off easy and it's pretty thick. So we want to take a strip of this right here. We're going to take it about that long, maybe about six inches long. You want to double it up. The reason I am doubling it up is because of this right here. I want it to go over the knife blade. As you can see, I'm going to lay this down. I'm going to take another piece while that's on there. The next thing we're going to do is take our tape and we need to go around the twist lock. So I'm going to take a piece probably about, I don't know, right at four inches long, right around there, and go like this. And if the cameraman can come in closer here, I'm going to take it right at the edge right here. When you do this, the secret to this, now hear me here, this is simple knowledge, but a lot of people won't be able to get this. When you pull your tape back, pull it at an angle down towards you, just a tad bit. When you do that, you will get it inside the crevices inside there. So that's just a pro tip. Now, if you see here, I made it down inside there pretty well. Now, I've done these before while I left, I left these areas exposed up here, and it turned out pretty nasty looking. Next, next, you want to take your thumbnail or something and go right along there and press it down in there. Okay, and the, the third step right here, this is no particular order, but I take a piece right about five, six inches, and I want to take it. Now I'm going to put it right along the spine of the knife. Just make sure the, the blade's covered up because later on within the staining process, we don't want nothing to get on the blade. Okay, the next step is to take our sandpaper and take a little strip right here. And what you want to do is go to your knife and you want to go a long ways because that's the way the grain of the wood, the wood is going. So you always sand with the grain of the wood. And that 120 is taking off everything nicely. Keep good, even pressure when you're doing this. Okay, we just finished with this 120 grit. It's pretty smooth, but I'm gonna take it down to 220. That's gonna smooth it out really nice. Whew. 
Okay, we just got through sanding this and it's pretty smooth right here, which will allow a good wood burn and good stain. Now I did leave out one thing and that is a pencil. You need one of these. The ones I prefer are the Dixon Tachondras and these are the black pencils. You can pick these up at Walmart, but I promise you just from many pencils I've used, these right here work the best on wood and you can tell by the eraser right here that I made a lot of mistakes, but it's all right. If you are not making a mistake, you are not learning anything. If you did everything right the first time, you would have no room for improvement. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay guys, we're gonna keep this one pretty simple. I'm not gonna get too crazy with it. And so I'll show you the design I'm gonna do. We're gonna make a triangle coming across here, then going back up across here. And on the other side, the same way. We're gonna get our center marks first. I always do this. I'm going to find the middle of the knife on each side. Now for the next point, I'm going to see, I'm going to go this way. Let's see how far I want to go down. Do the same thing on this side. You guys can follow this guide if you would like to, but one of the main reasons why I am doing this is so you will have your own creative ideas. This is simply a tool to help you start walking the right direction. I'm not saying mock this or mimic this, or if you want to follow this along, that is totally okay. I just want to empower you guys with the tools it takes, because once you start tapping into that creativity, it will start opening it up for you. And your mind will start taking on different ways of thinking, and you'll be like, oh, okay, I can do this here, I can do that there. And that's the secret to kind of coming up with these different designs. So right here, see if I can pull this off the first time. And when you do this, never just go along one time, always sketch it in. Okay, that's almost even. You can see some mistakes right here. So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to kind of thicken our lines up. We're going to bring it up to here and hopefully that will look all right. And that's what we got so far. Like I said, this is really rough right here. This is just in sketch mode. Once we start wood burning this, it's going to be a little bit different. Now we want, want to do the other side of this. So you can see I got off right here. So I'm, what I'm gonna do is just take this and fill this thing up on the outside. Okay, that's looking pretty good right here for starting. What I'm gonna do inside here is put some crackle effects with a wood burner. I absolutely love doing this. Okay, for the next part, we're gonna make notches for where we want to carve at. And since I'm not, I'm not gonna carve too much on this, I'm gonna do basically what I did right here. See those little notches? I may make them a little bit bigger, just to add some character in there. I'm gonna give myself some marks, that way I know where to... You know what? I'm gonna make just two of them. Let's add one notch at the bottom right here. This is just a throw in. You don't have to add this in. I'm just doing this to add some grip to it and it would be pretty aesthetically pleasing as well. Okay, this is completely ready to start wood burning and carving, but always do your carving before your wood burning first, at least in my opinion, because I find that if you do the wood burning first, you have a gap in the wood and the wood dust will actually go into the knife and you have to get a wet paper towel and get it out before you do the staining. So I always recommend doing the carving first. The bit I'm going to be using is the Duragrit sand drum. Now these are pretty pricey but they're worth their weight in gold and now you can get another one like this this tends to be a little bit bigger this is just a regular drum sander right here you can put in and um, use that as well or you can also use any type of carbide burr if you have one such as this cone shaped burr you've probably seen this in my other videos whatever you have to basically round it out it's not rocket science just make it work Okay, the next step is putting on a dust mask. Now for this sanding drum, sanding drum spits out a ton of dust. Okay, mm. okay, that still comes through the dust mask. This isn't the best in the world, so 
you want something better to tell you the truth okay the next step is to sand a little where i just got through using that rotary drum so we are covering up scratches with finer scratches with sandpaper so we just want to go through there let's make this smooth right here okay and this is why you want to put double edge tape on it you see what i'm doing to the knife right here if i had that with single tape that might have already would have cut through right there because I'm, I'm choking down on that blade so make sure you have your tape on there okay now we're going to do the same thing with these it's these little small details that make the difference okay now we are going to wood burn it like i said i'm using my more expensive unit the razor tip because it has this fine blade on here and i like the fine detail work but like i said you can use your you know less expensive unit if that's what you have to work with you can still get good results and like i said the purpose of this video isn't for you to copy this but for you to have the creative inspiration so let's start let's make sure i'm going to go to about a seven on here straight down Okay, a tip when you're wood burning, you want to keep it at a constant speed. If you look right here, I don't know if the camera will be able to tell it. This is thick right here. It gets thin and it gets thick again. That's pretty sloppy. So when you're doing this, make sure you stay at the same speed. You may have to go over it a few times to even it up. And I'm trying to get out of the way of the camera, so I'm messing it up a little bit more. But I'll go back and I'll get it done. There we go. Now, a secret is to get some thick edges on it. Keep it running at the same speed and thicken up your edges. I'm turning my, my tip slightly like this to create a bevel when I do this. That's a tip a lot of people won't tell you about right there when you're doing this. Woo, got hot. We just finished and here's what it looks like. That is looking pretty cool. I absolutely love the crackle effect. And you know what, if you guys do one of these, tag me in your video. I would absolutely love to see it. We have one more thing we throw in and that is the torch right here. Now, we don't wanna burn the wood, but we wanna lightly scorch it across. It looks absolutely amazing. So let's get started. Torching it really brings out the grain of the wood, but you can see right here, I got it a little too heavy. And that will rub off when I put my stain. So what I did, I got a very, very damp paper towel. I'm just gonna give that a quick rub down right here. You see that coming off right there? Here's what it looks like. I think it turned out really good. Now, if I would've took more time with this, I could've made it a little bit cleaner, but like I said, I'm rushing the video a little bit. What I'm gonna do is stir this special walnut stain right here that's the kind i use it's one of my favorite you see it a lot on a lot of my projects i use the min wax you want to stir this up never shake this because it gets a lot of air bubbles in it and you can actually get air bubbles in your stain if you're not careful i'm not going to do too dark of the stain on this because this will stain really dark we just want to take a napkin or if you have a piece of cotton or a, um, a little brush that actually works better i'm going to go down just like that just pretty even all the way down And this is where the good tape job pays off at right here. You can get in between the cracks right there and make it look good. Now, we just don't want to cake this up here. Let's wipe kind of some of the excess off right here. And we want to let this sit probably about 10 minutes. Okay, it's been sitting for a little bit. And what we want to do is wipe this off. If you do not wipe it off, there is a small micro layer of stain over the top and it will actually keep the wood from breathing. And when it's able to breathe, it pulls down the stain even further down into the wood. I've got a lot of uneven stain doing that. Now I could have put some pre-stain on here, but I'm not really worried about that step for what we're doing. So you just wanna wipe the excess off maybe after five to 10 minutes. Okay guys, the stain has been sitting for quite a while. Now it is time to polyurethane. I will say this though, I had to rush this because of the video time, but you guys normally would want to let the stain sit for about 
I'd say a day or two before you actually put the polyurethane on and make sure it's completely dry. So the next thing we need to do is to apply the polyurethane. Normally I would use a semi-gloss oil-based urethane but for this one, I'm gonna use this Kabat brand right here. It is a water-based urethane, which I've only used a couple of times and I tend to like it. What I'm using to apply the urethane here is this little sponge brush. You can get these at Walmart, but I really recommend getting these at Harbor Freight. They are very, very inexpensive. You can get a huge pack of them lot for four bucks. So here's what they look like. They're just a porous type of material. What you will wanna do is dip this in the stain right here and you just want to apply an even coat all the way around it. Now this water-based urethane dries super fast, but the oil-based urethane usually takes a lot longer and it makes the colors pop more. So this one is going to be a little bit of a duller stain. I got a satin finish on this, I believe. So the satin is going to give you the just base tone of it, and then you can go up to a semi-gloss or a high-gloss. Now after this dries, I'm gonna do this probably about two more times and get a good three coats on here. Okay guys, the urethane just dried and it looks amazing. Here it is right here. I'm loving the way that turned out. See the little finger grip right there? It grips right in there nicely. And you can see the, the end of that. I love the way the that little crackle effect turned out. We have one more thing left, guys, and this is what I get the most questions on. Matt, how do you patina your blades the way you do? And I'm gonna show you, and this is kind of like my, my secret concoction. It's not really a secret, but it is the way I do things. And here is one of the most effective ways to patina. Here we go. We need vinegar, mustard, some lemon juice. And here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna mix this all together in a small amount. Okay, first we're gonna add some mustard. And that's actually too much, but that's okay. Tad bit of vinegar, I'm talking about just a hair. Barely pour in there. There we go. And this is the way I like doing it. I'm using a match because I don't have any toothpicks. So I got a little too much. You see how runny that is? It needs to be a little bit thicker. So I am going to add some mustard. Okay, there we go. If I was taking my time, I could have done this a lot better. So the next step is, which I forgot, is to take the tape off the knife. Okay, there we go. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but always be sure to lock your knife when you go to do this. Now we're gonna take some rubbing alcohol and go across the blade. Okay, we got the alcohol right here. And we wanna clean this blade real good. Don't cut yourself. After you got the alcohol on there, just kind of dry it off, pat it off, make sure it's clean. Now for this next step, usually I would put some tape around the lock right here, but for the time, since the video is getting pretty long right now, I'm not gonna do that. But here's what I am gonna do. This little concoction right here we made, make sure it's stirred up good. And the way I'm gonna do it is just by dabbing some on there. I'm just gonna do a speckled pattern. Now you can get crazy with this right here and um, do all kinds of different layers and stuff, but I'm kind of liking the way this looks right here. Now one of the tricks is to get some big ones and some small ones. What we want to do is let this dry for 20 minutes, maybe longer. I usually do mine at 20 minutes, and then I may repeat this up another time after this just to add some more depth to it. So we will come back after this is dried. Okay guys, I just cleaned this up with water and it looks absolutely amazing. I don't think I'm gonna do a second patina on it. And here it is right here. Now those bubbles turned out really cool. And see, that's the effect of doing all those like that together. It really helps put a strong patina on it because all the acid in there. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this was a little bit lengthy, but hopefully you learned something. 
If you guys would like, hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if that's your thing, if you want to see more. And if you don't, that's cool with me. You know, I'm just here hanging out, having fun. I appreciate you guys so much, and I will see you in the next tutorial. Let me know if you have any more videos you want to see. Bye-bye.